Amen. How many have found God to be faithful? Yes, he Amen. He's faithful Monday, faithful Tuesday, faithful Wednesday, faithful Thursday, faithful Friday, faithful Saturday, faithful Sunday. You can just keep going because God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But you know, but I'm also glad that we've learned around here that you know a lot of times people think that they're like, well, God's faithful. You know, He's faithful to me even when I'm not faithful. I hear that saying a lot as a pastor, and you know, and you know, it rains on the just and the unjust. You can play Russian roulette all you want, but why would you want to? Exactly. You know, that, that, I mean, people say that to me all the time. They're like, you know, well, He's faithful. I'm fa so thankful He's faithful even when I'm not faithful. Well, that's probably something good to be thankful for. But if you realize you're not faithful, you realize you're playing Russian roulette and you have no sure word. The Bible says God's now given us a sure word. Amen. Amen. So that means even when it looks like it's not, you know that it is. It doesn't matter what it looks like in the natural, you know through the supernatural, God is making a way. Because if I was just having to roll the dice, I would be a confused, depressed, roller coaster riding person all the time. Amen. But when I know I stand on God's faith, Amen. and that His Word is sure, and that He is faithful, even when it don't look like it on Monday, come Friday, He usually makes a way. Or on Friday, it doesn't seem like there's enough to make it till Monday, He'll make a way. Because He always does. Why? But you know what? That requires us being faithful to Him. Now somebody say, well, well it's not by works you're saved. No, but it's by works that you know, he, you know He knows that you love Him and that other people know that you love Him. You're, you're right. It's a complete gift to being saved. And you can play Russian roulette from here to heaven. But you're also playing Russian roulette with getting to heaven. When you could have a sure word, Amen. Now I'm preaching way early tonight, but this is why we've been. Which goes right into why we've been so enthralled into the Book of Wisdom. Because if there was ever a time on earth when you need to have the wisdom of God, this is it. It, it goes from what's on your radio, from your TV, what's going on in your job, your home, going on the street around you, to your Facebook page. It applies. And if you do not use wisdom, you will not have a sure word. Amen? And uh, I'm just always uh, dumbfounded. How well, You know, all of us have a brain, right? Has anybody here ever been arrogant and thought you were smarter than everybody else? Or thought you had it all figured out? You know, if you've ever served God very long, you start figuring out that you don't have it all figured out. Now listen, most maybe maybe it's a man. Most men, you know. But see, here's the thing: everybody has an opinion. But you know that I'm just here to inform you that nobody's opinion matters. Only the facts of the Word of God matter. And somebody that has an opinion is about as dangerous as somebody that has a handgun that doesn't know how to use one, because it's going to fire off always at the most inopportune time. Come on, are you hearing, Pastor, tonight? But if you have wisdom and you've you've been trained how to how to how to use that word, guess what? It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna do exactly what it's intended to do. It's gonna hit its intended target, right? But have you ever tried talking to someone that had so many opinions about something, but they don't have any facts, or even they think they have? I mean, you could. Have anybody ever talk to somebody that was a that was a, you know? A, What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not a creationist. They're a evolutionist. evolutionist. You ever talk to any of those people? I mean, they got so many facts, they confuse themselves in the first five minutes. I'm not joking. If you've never talked to one, and you can just ask a few simple questions, and they just turn red from the top, from the bottom of their head to the top. I mean, and you're just talking about biblical facts. You're not even trying to argue. They just turn red. I mean, you can get them all the way down to the atom and ask them who made the atom. <laughs> I've done it before. I don't suggest it. It was back in my younger ministry days. I was quite a handful. It was three shades red. You know. But you know what? I didn't benefit that person one bit, to be honest. 
because they didn't really care what I had to say. Because I was trying, because to be honest, I was prideful and I was trying to prove my point as much as they were trying to prove theirs. But I learned from it. How did I learn? I learned wisdom from the Word of God and I learned how to deal with those things. One, the Bible says even a fool looks smart when he keeps his mouth shut. That was one of my first nuggets of wisdom. I took it to heart. Everybody thought I was smart. I was just chewing on my tongue. <laughs> you say, what's that got to do with all this stuff? Because we're in a we've been in a delicate subject for the last few weeks, but how many have been getting a lot out of it? Amen. Well, Pastor Tammy, will you come pass out tonight's uh, sheets to go along with our next few verses? Does anybody remember what verse we're on now? Does everybody agree on 13? She is correct. There was a whole bunch of those last week, Sister Bonnie. Okay. Didn't get it, so. Amen. So we've been talking about the spirit of what? What have we been calling it? Anybody remember? All those things are in there. But, uh, you know, this is a temptation at its finest. It's, it's a spirit of sexuality, but it's more than that. It's almost the spirit of, it's, it's part of the spirit of Jezebel. And, uh, but Jezebel usually goes, only goes after leaders. This one just goes after everybody. It's an equal opportunity offender. I, I talked about incubus and a succubus, but that is not exactly all this is. They are just types of demonic entities that flow with, with the spirit. So, we've been talking about this uh, spirit of adultery, this spirit of fornication. Amen? And uh, how many of you started realizing it's more than... Most time when people talk about this, we want to put it in simple boxes that we can fit into. As long as I don't cheat on my spouse, I'm okay. That's a plus. If you don't do that, that's, a, that's great. That is good. But how I many know this spirit is talking about way more than that? It's talking about cheating on your Creator. It's talking about, listen, you're married to Jesus. You're His bride. And it's talking about you stepping out on Him. And that is one reason why I believe the enemy has worked overtime in Hollywood and every other place out there is because it's become such a perverted place that it used to, to do these acts, would have, you would have had to went and sought someone out and had a kind of relationship with them to, to actually spark some of the things we've been talking about. Now, not that they couldn't use their imagination back then. I'm positive they did. But nowadays, people don't have to work at it. They can be in their own home and be attacked by one of these spirits by flipping through something. And if they don't have the wisdom of the Word of God, they don't know how to deal with it correctly, to be honest with you. And it leads them into a mess. When God actually specifically talked to us about it and how to deal with it. Now, how, doesn't that sound like wisdom, something learned? But now how many knows there? Is, I don't think there's any human being alive, especially men, men and pastors. I am not comfortable teaching this, but I also realize that God told me to teach it, and I've done my best to keep it G-rated. But there's some things we have to talk about on along the way, Amen. And we're going to do that. So. The, we ended with verse 12 that said, and I say now I've hated instruction and my heart despised reproof. See, someone that lets their heart get hardened, that gets sucked into this place, they don't want... Do you notice today in our society, how many people want to be corrected? <laughs> so do you see well, that's already a precursor to this spirit ruling? It's one of the things it comes from. <clears throat> if you can't stand to be corrected, if you can't take correction then you have, there is one root that becomes an open doorway for the Spirit to move into your life. Do you all see that? 
And how many, have you ever met anybody, they just despise, I mean, literally, if you bring up that person's name that brought correction to them, to this day, those nose will still snarl and the hackles will still come up on the back of their neck. And that person could have done it all in love and meant everything the best for the person still does, but that is what this spirit brings out. And so, you know, the good news, we can get under the blood anytime we recognize these things. If you've ever been a person or you still think you still have that about someone, you recognize that you probably need some deliverance from that. And it's real easy. You repent, recognize it, and rip that root right out and receive the correction that that person was trying to speak into your life as long as it lines up with the Word of God. But I will say, there's even a, such, there's even such a religious spirit that... When it does line up the Word of God, it'll go ahead and twist the Word of God because you're offended and you don't want to receive the correction. And it'll try to convince you it doesn't line up the Word of God and it'll pervert ten other scriptures just to okay the one that you were arguing about. If we're going to be talking, if we're going to be brash about it, let's be honest. So, and if you've been taught well on that, it, it aligns, the, the Word of God does not contradict itself. So if you're experiencing something, Number one, it's it's a pretty good sign. If you want to be honest, if you're gonna, if we could get you to step back into the anointing just for a moment during this, you'd look and say, "Well, I've got bitterness. That's a pretty good sign. So I'm drunk. I've got unforgiveness. That's a pretty good sign. Something's wrong." See, all these are roots that this spirit starts opening, flows. That people don't just get sucked in and start doing this stuff. There's roots at the bottom that opens the doorways that that, that, that takes them in. And so it's good to recognize the roots. It's good to recognize to keep the door shut. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, it talks, about, it talks about how they hated discipline, hated proof. And then we're going to read 13. Who wants to read 13 tonight? Oh my goodness. Isaiah, Rebecca, Heather, Reese, Pastor Tammy. Bryce, was that your hand I saw wiggle? Okay. I'm not trying to volunteer you. I just don't leave you. Do I, how many more do I need? I have two more. Somebody told me. Bonnie and Deb. All right, I'll get you next, Sister Joyce. I didn't see you two. Let's. We got plenty to read. Let's go. Why didn't I listen to my mentors or take my teachers seriously? Neither have I obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors. Neither have I obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor turned my ear to those who instructed me. I wouldn't listen to my teachers. I paid no attention to them. All right, let's, I want to start somewhere that's really simple, that's obvious. Number one, that means you're going to have to be under authority somewhere. You're going to have to be submitted to teachers, and you're going to have to have mentors in your life. Now, there is a whole movement that's saying otherwise that bounces all over the place, and they're as unstable as water. And if you ever get around them, this spirit is in them. They'll hide it real good, but it'll manifest in different areas of their life. I'm just telling you, you can take it from there. But so the first thing you have to do is be submitted. To, is that, because look, God doesn't even really drag that out. He just says that is common statement, which now it's not a common thing. And here he's like, that wasn't even part of his point. That was just, uh, he was just assuming that any person would do that. Right? And so now did it say that they listened to all the things they agreed with? No. That they did what they thought was right. If you obey somebody, do you just do what you think is the best advice from them? But why is it today that that's how people treat the Word of God, the ministers of God, the prophets of God? That's how everybody treats them. They go, you know, they don't think that the word of, you know, everybody knows what the word obey means. But they think, well, you know, God didn't call me to be a robot. 
He didn't call me to be a slave to His Word. No, He called you to be blessed. He called you to, to walk in the fullness of, of His riches and His glory. And He gave you fathers and instructors and mentors and teachers that love you, that want to speak into your life to guide you there. And, and, and some, you know what? Most, most people, not most, anybody that God truly calls on that place, they're not going to do it out of a place of trying to control you. They're going to have a place to try to get you to go. Now, sometimes they'll see stuff that you don't see way before you see it, and it won't make any sense to you. But I promise you, if you don't obey it, by the time it makes sense, it'll be too late. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see? Now, listen, am I telling you to let some guy lead you around by the nose? No, I'm, I'm talking about what lines up with the Word of God, when it's done decently in order according to the Word of God. Amen? So, they, so when I tell you to obey, if I say, Pastor Tammy, would you please come here? Did I ask her or tell her? Yes. All right. But she still didn't come, did she? <laughs> oh, see? She... <laughs> but if I said, Pastor Tammy, come here. See, she's still not a <laughs> But see, because she had to figure it out in her own mind what was right or not. <laughs> instead of just obeying. True? She was like, well, does he mean it? Does he not mean it? Because that's what most people do instead of simply obeying. <coughs> when you obey, it takes all the pressure off you of having to figure it out. You can be seated. <laughs> I'm not trying to make my wife look bad. I... But I... It very well proved the point of how we use... So, to learn to change, we have to learn to admit that's how we usually respond to things, right? So then to work at it means I see the Word there and I'm going to learn to be quick to obey the Word of God, the men of God, those things spoken into my life without having to try to figure them out first. Because usually by the time we figure them out, we're already into a mess that, they were, that the word Lord was trying to keep us out of. And I found that God speaks softly and most of his men, men of God speak softly. They usually won't they always tell you exactly what to do. They'll give you, a, they'll lay it out there and just, you choose to follow it. Because, why? Because they love you. Because they're not trying to control you like a puppet. Amen. How, how many have found that to be true? They'll lay it out there. And, and, and guess what? God doesn't throw you away when you miss it. And, the, and if, they're, if they're really called to be mentors, teachers in your life, they don't throw you away when you miss it. They just help steer you back on course. But the key is to learn to do, listen quickly, right? That's, what, that's the wisdom we're gaining here, right? Learn to follow quickly without trying to figure it out on our own. Amen? How, how many see that? How many see the importance of obeying? Do you see the difference that was brought out tonight? So... And then it goes on to hear the voice. The Bible says that if Jesus is our shepherd, and then he put, and the pastors are his under shepherds, says that sheep shall hear my voice and know it and follow me. Do you know, I can tell when someone has, God has led someone in and they've decided I'm their pastor. For one, they start listening to the voice that God is speaking and they start following it. Right? Now, what happens if you've got a whole multitude of voices talking? How do you know which one's right? Well, you can, but it says the voice of my teachers. But what about, you know, it does say teachers. And it says them that instructed me, you know. But I believe back then, they all went to wherever they went, they'd have teachers inside the synagogue. And each place would have a synagogue. Not that they didn't visit other synagogues, but they had a rabbi, they had a teacher who was the one that instructed them. That they knew his voice and that they trusted him because he had proven his track record according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now today, people pick whatever voice lines up best with what they think and they can't learn anything. How, let alone correction, because the, the Bible, uh, say words like the New Testament, it says that in the end times they'll have itching ears. 
and they'll find those that line up with them. Because they're because to, if, when you find when you find a voice, that means that person, it, it, not if they'll speak correction, they're going to speak something into your life that's going to have to cause you to come up and and come out and grow up and do some things because that's how God ordained it. But today, people just go around finding whatever voice fits their thing that they're they're into. Say, why are you touching that preacher? Well. I want you to make sure you got plenty of wisdom that no matter where you go in life from here on out, you never get sucked into that. That you got plenty of wisdom on the subject. Amen. <coughs> and then it says, another one, it says, didn't take my teachers seriously. Now see, Pastor Tammy, she didn't take me seriously at all, did she? <laughs> she didn't once take me serious. She thought he must be joking. I set her up. Nice. She paid no attention to me. She's just like, well, I don't know what he's up to. Give an ear to those who instructed me. So, I hope this causes you to start, because listen, the Bible says your study show you're putting all this word in, and then it says you're going to have to listen closely to follow those voices and, and hear, because, you know, how many know the Holy Ghost is a gentleman mm -hmm. and his servant should be a gentleman? So they're not going to come to you always with a big hammer or a big club to beat you in the back of the head. I told you, don't go that way. You know, sometimes pastors feel that way, but we don't do that. <laughs> we pray. Lord, you get them with the club. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. We know. Verse 14. Who wants to read? Alright. Uh, Sister Joyce first. Isaiah. Reese. Hadassah. Rebecca. Layla Lou. And, and I need one more, I guess. Do I need one more? All right, Heather, I'll get you next, Josiah. Are you going to read by yourself? All right, let's go. I was almost an all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. I didn't know she was actually going to do that. Talk loud, Isaiah. You're talking for How many of you want to be publicly disgraced? Anybody? Now before I expound on this verse, we're going to read the next verse, which I touched on last week, and then we're going to go to our sheets. Who wants to read verse 15? Reese, Isaiah, Deb, Bonnie, Josiah, Joyce. How many more do I need? One more. Heather. Oh, Becky, she hasn't read for us yet. Back there. I couldn't see her hand for the computer. All right, let's go. Drink water at a fine home. Sister. Sister. And running water out of thine own. Drink water from your own sister and water flowing from your own well. Do you know the saying, drink from your own rain barrel and draw water from your own spring fed well? Drink waters out of thine own system and running waters out of thine own well. Drink water from your own sister. Good 
job, Josiah. Is it next to the last? Yep. Okay. Drink water out of your own cistern, running water out of your own well. Be faithful to your own wife and give your love to her alone. That last one sums it up. We're, first, we're going to... Anybody, everybody know what a cistern is? A rain barrel, but down in the Ozarks, it used to be where you'd dig a hole in the rocks and all the rain water and off your house and everywhere around would catch and run into the cistern and all the, and it would actually have it in a place where all the groundwater would run to it. And then you'd put a pump in the bottom of it and that would be your well. And so what we're talking about here is uh, <sighs> cistern is where you draw your water from. Your wife should be where you draw your love from physically, spiritually, and emotionally, but they're talking a lot about a lot of physical here, to be honest. Because, and this is where I touched on last week, where wives, you, were, you should not, you know, the devil's trying to tempt your husband every which way he can. This, this whole spirit is trying to entice him. The same way it's trying to entice you ladies. I'm not taking that from it. But, you know, it says, for right here it's telling husbands make sure you just get all your loving from your wife and put all your attention to her but also believe that the wives should be make they should make it whether nothing should be able to tempt him to come away i'm not talking about where it's all hanging on you if he does something stupid i'm just saying that you know you should uh you should be more tempting than the devil ever could be y'all read that g-rated <laughs> And husbands, you should love her in such a way that she wants to be around you and hug your neck and not choke your neck in such a way that makes you want to do those things. Everybody get where pastor's coming from. All right. But if you have your sheets, I'm going to read these before I expound. What's it say? Sin will find. How do you know sin? If you don't repent for it, you don't get it under the blood. There's no if, coulda, shoulda, woulda, might. This spirit will cause you to come out. It will cost you everything. This spirit is one that, that it doesn't just harm you. The Bible says it harms the whole body. And it will destroy a church. It will destroy a ministry. It'll, it's almost like putting a hand grenade in your life and just things start blowing up from it. Amen. How many have seen that already in things? Amen. So we're going to read here Numbers. I think he needs some sheets. All right. Numbers 32, verse 22. It says, And the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward you shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you would not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Could you get me a drink, Pastor Timmy, from up there, please? So you all everybody see how nice she obeyed me. I thought I was going to get smacked. <laughs> see me cower for a minute there. <laughs> I'm still a little nervous. Temptations to sin. <laughs> she not beat your husband. She abuses me. She swears she never heard of a person in her life until she married me. I shouldn't say abuse. I should say hit. Even if you deserve. So, listen. If you don't obey the Lord, your sin is going to find you out. Well, the Bible says what's... I didn't put this, this scripture in here tonight because I, the Holy Ghost didn't bring it to my remembrance to this right now, or I would have. But the Bible says what's done in darkness is brought into the light. Mm -hmm. And the, the, here's the thing. Most people, when they're sinning, they think that's their punishment. God always brings things from the darkness into the light to get you set free and delivered. Right. But... You need to know it's if you don't repent, if you don't get under the blood, or if you wait, if you don't listen to like we were talking about earlier and obey the first hand, it's going to cost you some things. Now that's not saying God can't restore it. It's not saying God can't rebuild it. But let's not be naive that this stuff is a destructive force, and God has given you wisdom not to go near it. 
How many can see that in the Word? And then we go on, temptations to sin, Matthew 18, verse 7. It says, Woe unto the world because of offenses. It must be that offenses come, but woe to the man by whom the offenses come. Is there anything more offensive than getting involved with this spirit to people? Do you get, people don't get much more offended over anything than this. Not saying that's all the scripture pertains to. I'm just pointing out because we're going to go here. It says, Where therefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Now listen, what did he plainly he told us to flee from this thing. He said make a wide berth around it. Don't talk to it. Don't look at it. And so, you know what? This thing will burn you. This thing will consume you. It will eat your life. And so if you realize it's on you, he's saying whatever it is, whatever area that's in, it's just better to cut it out, that whole area out of your life right now, period, and get free and delivered from it until you're strong enough to deal with all this. Don't try to, don't try to uh, talk to it. Don't try to, you know, I'm going to stand here in faith as my, I burn, you know. What you... Come on, once people get deceived, they get into this thing, they do stupid things. They have no wisdom. But it says, and if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it far from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Now, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be honest. When I first read these scriptures as a young man, a young minister, I thought, good heaven, he wants me to pluck my eye out. <laughs> I better watch where my eyes are going. And do you know what? I really believe... No, he's not wanting you to pluck your eye out. But I really believe that was the realization he wanted us to come to in our spirit. That it's so... Can, can, can anybody imagine something that you, you did not want to view something you were so drastically you were willing to pluck out your eye? That you didn't want to be a part of something you are willing to do that? Can anybody imagine that? See, that is the severity God's wanting us to have against this spirit. And this thing has consumed our whole society. And God's saying, if you even get near it, pluck your eye out. That'll cause you to stop and think, wouldn't it? And it goes on to say, and then we're going to go on down here. The par how many know this? when people get messed up in this, how many know that God wants, he, he died for everybody to be saved, right? It says, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you, heaven, that in say, say to you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is heaven. For the Son is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, one of them go astray? Do he not leave the ninety-nine and go into the mountains and seeketh that is which is gone astray? Amen. So when we see somebody that first falls into sin. What is, the, what, is our, what is our action supposed to be? When we see someone that's getting consumed with this spirit, are we supposed to go, oh, did you see what brother so-and-so did? Did you see what sister so-and-so did? Do you never believe where I... I'll tell you a joke. So, there was this new gentleman. He had uh, been coming to church for a while. He'd been sitting in the back, and uh, there was this uh, this real gospel in the, in the in the church. Her name was Mildred, and she was always constantly stirring strife and telling stories of this and that. And one night on the way home, his truck broke down, and it broke down right in front of the local tavern where he used to frequent before he gave his heart to the Lord. And he just left his truck sit there and he walked home and the next morning he went and got it. Well, at church, everybody was staring at him and they were really giving him a cold shoulder and nobody wanted to talk to him. And all of a sudden, he overheard the Mildred telling them about how she saw his truck out at that bar. So everybody assumed that he just went back to drinking and partying again. And he was offended and he was going to leave the church and he felt like the Lord's supposed to say, no, don't do that. I've got a better idea. <laughs> and so the next night he took his truck and he was driving by this house and he saw an empty driveway and he did just what the Lord told him. He took it and he parked it in that driveway and he got out and he walked home. 
Well, the next day at church, everybody was giving him and Mildred funny looks, and everybody was talking. And she said, why did you leave your truck in my driveway all night long? Everybody thinks we're having an affair. He said, see, you shouldn't judge people, should you? <laughs> Careful, I own a lot of vehicles. <laughs> Moving along. So he's not wanting us to... So it says, And so be it fine. Very last say, He rejoices more of the sheep than of the ninety-nine which went astray. Even so, it is not the will of your father which is the sheep that one of these little ones should perish. So moreover, if thy brother saw trespasses against thee, go and tell your closest friend his fault. Go and tell your confidant his fault. What's it say? Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Now, most people think this is just when somebody has done something personally to you. It has to be aimed right at you. But see, it didn't say that. It said offenses. Mm -hmm. That's why we, where I come from, we have an old saying for this, actually even called checking the slate. If you, if you hear something, how many of the enemy is really good at dropping stuff in your mind? So he's always trying to fire arrows. And sometimes those arrows, against all your best doing, may kind of try to stick. You know, the best way to do is go to the person and say, Hey, brother in love. Hey, sister. This is what I'm seeing. Is this what's going on here? And sometimes they might go, Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Or sometimes I might go, no, that was not my intention. I, I'm really sorry. Either way, what's done is that you're both back in love with each other and that thing's squashed. Yep. It should be the end of it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. See how God ordained that? Isn't that good? Now, what about if you call, you caught somebody and they were, the Bible says, you know, to take care of your own stuff, to take care of your own being and your own eye before you go and get some else. What about if you have been dealing with this? You've already dealt with this spirit. You've already had to overcome it. And you see somebody getting sucked in from it, and they're doing some stuff that's really offending you. The Bible says to go to them in love and try to guide them out of that. Now, if they don't receive you, that's on them. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't review you the right of saying, well, that's, that's, a, that's between them and God. Well, that's God. I'll pray for them. You don't pray for them. They want a man in the moon. Most people don't. And I'm going to pray for them. If you're really that concerned, it will have something. It will, the Bible says that Jesus looked on people, that, especially people who are doing this. He says he was moved with compassion. See, when, you, when this is going on, it'll cause compassion to rise up in you that you'll want to do whatever it takes to reach that person. Not because you're so mad you want to pinch their head off and tell God they die and you're going to have a walk forward with them. That's not the same thing. If you can't go to if you can't go to them and talk to them in love, you need to wait till you get your love walk out lined out enough to go talk to them. Unless they're your pastor or somebody over you in authority, then you probably need to talk to them because they're probably trying to save you a whole bunch of heartache. Mm -hmm. And they're probably mature enough to handle you at your worst. <laughs> I mean that I, I'm really meaning that through that's we see that through the word of God we've already studied tonight, right? So, but he says, more of thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Now, how many would like to, how many would like to start seeing more people redeemed instead of chased out? Amen. But how many knows this is, how many here are like confrontations? Anybody? Anybody thrive on confrontations? <laughs> not not ones that usually walk in love though. No. <laughs> yeah, because most people that walk in love, it just comes naturally. You don't like confrontations, but unfortunately, what it does is it causes us it causes us not to deal with things in the body of Christ that need to be dealt with, and the enemy just gets to get people off alone and work heydays on them. Now, I've had people that I've I've, I've had to do this a lot as pastor. And I've got about a 90% win ratio, and the 10% still bother me. Why? Because I love them. And they went all the way down through these scriptures that we're going to talk about, but everywhere I did it to return them to God, not chase them away from God. There's a difference, amen? 
because listen, this thing when it gets a hold of your life, remember, it does not do, it does not just affect you. It affects the whole body. It affects your family. It affects the church you're in. It will affect it affects everything, and there's no doubt about it. It says, but if he will not hear thee, then take two or three. To take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Now, the point is to bring them back, but you also want to establish between you and God that you did everything you could to bring this person back. You're not establishing they're a heathen. God already knows that. God already knows they're dealing with this. Amen. You're going to say, so listen, we're documenting that we're doing everything we can that that way, the enemy can't bring an accusation against us that said, you guys just let them take off and do whatever. didn't even care. Right. Now, is this popular in society today? No. It's almost actually unheard of in most church governances and church bodies. I'm thankful that it's, I'm thankful it's done here. And we, we've saved a lot. And we, we've lost a few. I, my heart is still broken over the few that are being buffeted. But I still pray for them every day to be returned about where I'm about to get to. My heart is never that they're just gone. There's not a day that goes by they're not close to my heart as pastor. And that's how it should be if you're walking through this. Because this spirit that we're studying about, it's seeking whom it may devour. And it's a strong spirit. It destroys ministries. It destroys churches. It destroy, it's been destroying the whole family unit in America. This thing is moving heavily. And it's one of the most untalked about things in all America. Because for one, there's a right way to have a healthy SEX life. And there's a way to have an unhealthy SEX life. And nobody wants to talk about either one of those either. All the kids are trying to say, well, that's Pharaoh Pastor Spell. Just don't do it. <laughs> he put his head down. I'm sorry. He says that if, you shall if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and publican. Now, when you, the reason why a lot of people don't tell churches no more is because there's hardly enough mature leaders in a church that can deal with a person the right way. I should say you should tell the, at least the, the governing board should at least be made known aware of and all those that pertain to it. I do believe he means the whole church, but if you're talking about the whole church, then you're also talking about ones that are acting like the church, mm -hmm. that are behaving like the church. Otherwise, you're just giving the enemy more ammo. Mm -hmm. Amen. So then it goes on to say, uh, how many know Jesus loves heathen men and publicans? Mm -hmm. But how many know that they, uh, they let them know that they were in sin and that they needed to change? Right. That's the same way we're supposed to be treating them. Amen. Verily I say, to whosoever shall bind on this earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever be loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now, why do you think that's the very little next scripture after doing all this, all this correction to this spirit? Why do you think this is the next last, next verse? Next step. Next step. Start taking authority. Yeah. Don't let that person just be taken out to the woodshed and say they're done. The next step is that you start stepping in in their place and start attacking. The, start, not attacking because the battle's already won through the Lord. But you start standing in the gap and binding this demonic thing that, that they've let into their life. Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touch anything, it shall be done for them in heaven, which is heaven. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of. And see, everybody quotes this. Well, guess what? It probably should be the same two or three you get took with you <laughs> to establish the thing. It should be the same two or three that's hearts are grieved and moved with compassion to pray for these people and get them restored. And we see all the way over in Proverbs where God was talking about this spirit. And we see here how they're having to deal with it during the New Testament church. Amen. Because now we're going to go back to verses 14 and 15. Because it says, so look, it's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's, it's just wonderful. They didn't get these ideas from nowhere. They got them from the Word of God, even the ones you just read about in the New Testament. They came right here from the book of Wisdom. 
where he said, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. And then it talks about being found out. It talks about being almost in ruin. See, what happens is that he's telling you, if you deal with this thing, you're going to end the whole, whole assembly, the whole church is going to know and they're going to bust you out. And it's going to have to be dealt with openly. Amen? And how many knows that that will make you publicly disgraced? She's okay. She'll live. So, how many want to be publicly disgraced? How many think the people that started down this course was that was their intention? They were just looking to have a good time. Not thinking about where the road went. And we studied about how they start, they're not thinking about anything after they start sucked into this thing. But how many think that knowing the end could help a lot of people from ever beginning in the first place? If you really believe, which is you better believe it because it's the Word of God, and we've now looked at it through multiple places, that this is what's going to happen if you, when you fully give in to this Spirit. Ain't that enough to cause you to give a wide berth? Wouldn't that, see, that's wisdom right there. Isn't it? That's a nugget that says, I know what happens when I give in to that. That's going to cause me to give that thing a wide berth. Because it usually seems so innocent, doesn't it? And how many know that, you know, listen, Paul said if you could, you were able to stay single, that it was best because you could be even more to the ministry. And I thought that was me for many years. But I can tell you, you know how you can tell God's called you to be single? He sustains your needs for everything you would have need of during that time so, you don't, so the enemy's not able to tempt you and draw you away. Do y'all follow me? If he's not sustaining your needs or those needs start rising up, it's not because, it's, it's then sometimes, not always, you need to seek God on this, but a lot of times it's because he's got a spouse coming and there's something there and he's, he's going to draw all those together. Now, that is not the same emotions as lust. Right. Lust is to get you in trouble every time. Regardless, it's tainted. It's this spirit. That's what lust is. But, you know, there was a season that I was single for many, many years, and God sustained me. And I wasn't able to, I, now I, I watched what was on my, I, I guarded my heart, what was on my TV, I guarded what it was, I, I, and I wasn't naive. I had, I, I, I'd unfortunately, Pastor Demi kept herself pure, I unfortunately had had a life before Christ, and I was a heathen. And so I really guarded myself. I didn't let, you know, I made a wide berth about all kinds of stuff because I knew where I could end up. But you know, God gave me a peace inside where though I wasn't able, it wasn't like I was easily distracted either. Because those desires, I, he had really taken them from me. And so I, it was one way that I knew I was called to be single and not, not to be out looking for something else. And when it was his time, he would start moving some of those things. That's what some of it drinking out from your own water. I mean, I mean, when it, and then when God's called you, He's got a wife, He's got a mate, He's got a husband for you. And, you know, it's going to go on later where it starts talking about the wife of your youth and all those things. You know, even if you've been married a long time, He tells you how to deal with that. Isn't that good that God didn't leave you wondering? Amen. Well, I've been married a long time, Lord. I don't have any passion left. It's amazing how the book draws all that out how to deal with it. Amen? Because he knows what the enemy's going to do. And so, you know, it, sometimes you say, well, that's just common sense, preacher. Drink from your own wells. But how many know you need to understand that's also where your, all your satisfaction is going to come from? spiritually, it's not just spiritually, physically, emotionally. That's what's going to complete you. Now, if you're married to Christ, He is going to be your sister. If He's called you to be single, to put it in a better way, you're married to Him, and He will be the one who sustains you. And He is the one you should be looking for, not be always keeping your eyes looking for the next guy or the girl. Big smile. 
Trust me, I got years of practice. <laughs> Amen. I went a total different direction than I intended on teaching on this tonight. But, number one, how many of you realize that your sin will find you out? The only way for it not to, and it's not a guarantee, it's just a guarantee that you'll get mercy and be forgiven, is to repent and turn, and God will show you mercy. He'll put it under the blood, and He'll forget it. But sometimes, how do you know there's already seeds in the ground that are too late to come back? They're going to they're gonna harvest certain things. But that doesn't mean that Romans 8.28 isn't still true then if you truly turned your heart to God because Romans 8.28 says all things work together for good that love God are called according to His purpose. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that He can't work it out for His good. The key is to stay under His blood and under His anointing from then on. Amen. How many see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Questions. I'm going to start with questions first. <coughs> Anybody have any questions for me tonight? Not, not that I want any, but <laughs> not one single question. <laughs> Sister Heather. Well, if you do see somebody in like that blatant sin or whatever, you're supposed to also go to your pastor if they're under... I mean, yes. Yeah. Yes. If they're... But, you know, in, in love, I mean, which I know that's what you're saying, but I want to I classify, you know, because if, if you come to me trying to get somebody in trouble, it won't ever end well. <laughs> if you come to me because you're concerned and you see somebody that's in a mess, then nine times out of ten, I've already probably seen the Holy Ghost and it's just confirming, and then God's probably wanting you to pray for him. He's just bringing me a prayer partner to help work on the area. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then we're going to, I'm probably already talking to the person knowing me. Not always, but sometimes I wait till the Holy Ghost softens her up a little bit, gets their heart softened, puts them through the meat tenderizer, then I can talk to them. <laughs> We've all been there. It's all right. Any other questions? Going once. Going twice for questions. All right, questions are now closed. All right, now what did y'all get from tonight? You, you're scaring me, Sister Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to word it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to read all the mail. Like, Drink from your own sister. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> brother, brother Kevin, is, is that it? Drink for yeah. You better you better learn to love the water. <laughs> I think I'm turning a little red. So my sister Shauna. Um. <laughs> Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sister Becky. Uh, if we can't take fraction, then that opens up the doorway for this to come in. Yeah, exactly. Good stuff. Sister <laughs> Rebecca. If you don't obey God, your sin will find you out. God is giving you the wisdom so you don't be deceived by the Spirit. Amen. Good stuff. I kind of question. You waited a little late now. Yeah. <laughs> when you said um, it may be too late, like you can still repent, but it's no guarantee, does that mean you can be forgiven in heaven, but something still may fester here on earth? Or? Well, let me give you an exact example, and this is not about anybody in the room, but it's one of the best examples to give okay, <coughs> on this subject. Let's say you get into, you fall into fornication, and you're with a girlfriend. And you know it's wrong. You know you're sleeping with her and it's sin. And if you don't give it quick, you're going to split hell wide open. And God's dealing with you. Maybe he's even sent me to talk to you about it. And you just kept on going because it feels good. And all of a sudden, one day, you decide, God, it finally gets too much for you. And you say, man, I just want to serve God. This is too much. I love the girl. 
you know, but Lord, I'm going to serve you. I repent for sleeping with her. I repent for having sex with her and doing all these things. And then the very next day or a week or two later, she comes up to you and says, Hey, brother, I, I love you. Guess what? We're going to have a baby. I'm pregnant. Now, God forgave you of all that sin. It's washed clean, and you can be set free and delivered from it. But that seed of that baby, that is, and that baby can be a good thing. It can work together for good. It can be a blessing in your life. But you're now going to be tied to someone that you were never probably intended to be tied to for the rest of your life, and you're going to have to deal with them. It's probably more than 50% of the American population. <laughs> but God gave us wisdom not to go through that. And I'm not trying, and, and there's lots of other scenarios. I was just trying to use one that you could. No, I get it. And now, did God forgive you for that? You bet. Are you going to go to heaven? You bet. Can you have a great life here on earth and still be used of God? Absolutely. But there's some stuff that you'll have to deal with forever. And God probably was trying to get a hold of you beforehand. Now, I'm not passing judgment on anybody. I'm not trying. It's just the best analogy. I can, because there's a million different ones we could use. This is the best one that really brings that out that, I'm, that I know of. Because, you know... That's just something that happened. And, and a lot of people would say, well, then God ordained it. You know what, God? I'm sure God did ordain you to have a baby. I'm sure God did ordain to have those things. But there's an appointed time for things. There's an appointed place. and There's an appointed blessing for those things to come to pass. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love that baby. It doesn't mean God doesn't have a plan and a purpose for that baby. He will. And he'll use them. It just means that it might have been out of his time. He'll say, well, how can something get out of God's timing? Well, we can look at the word for more Anyways, did I answer it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're still on the kid. Um, any other questions now that before I go on? on the other? You're all good, brother. It's good. Uh, that now counts as what I learned. <laughs> that now counts as what you learned. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. I have to know that. <laughs> Pretty, pretty quick witted. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get you next week. You'll come back next week. Where's Pat at, by the way? We well, seen her for two weeks. Yeah. All right, I'll talk to you for service. Yeah. All right. All right. Who uh, wants to go next on what they learned tonight? Who hasn't? Who hasn't shared? Pastor Tammy. Yeah. How many have noted? How many? Let's let's just be brutally honest. How many know that most people today think that's an option to have teachers and mentors as an option? I got one, two, three, four. Yeah, I, but most people think it's an option, right? That's what I'm saying. Oh, an option. Yes, an option. That's what I didn't clarify myself. Sorry, that was all me. Might me. How many today have seen where most people believe that it's an option? To have mentors and teachers. That they don't have to. That they don't have to have. Yes. Yeah. Right. I think I finally got it out. Yeah. <laughs> how many see that that's the norm across today? And how many see that, man, you're just instantly cutting yourself off from the wisdom and all the stuff that comes with it. How that's how God flows through to talk to you. And you can, yes, ma'am. You know when. Uh, you watch a lot of the movies and stuff and the martial arts and all this stuff and, and people talk about, well, sensei doesn't allow this and I can't do this because I'm, you know, I'm disciplined. People respect that. But if you're a Christian and say, my master doesn't allow it, I have to be disciplined. It's a total different respect from people. You don't get that respect. No. But in the movies, the people that are in the martial arts and all that, they do. Oh, yeah. And it's, and it's not near as strong as what we have. No. No. I agree, and people don't respect it. The, instantly today, though, if you, if you tried to say, well, uh, my pastor's really warned me about that, instantly they would say, well, he is a controlling, blah, blah, blah. And they might, they would know that person from, yeah. from Adam, you know? Or even if you refer to the Word. You know? Exactly. Yeah, I was trying to even make it even more so. Exactly, the Word. If we go, I can't do that because the Word says. Yeah. You know, that's 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 it. And then, you know, what about somebody's taught you in the Word? And like, like I said earlier, I don't tell people how to live their lives. I take them to the Word. 
anyone's from God, I give them a heads up. And what they choose to do with it between them and God, I'm still going to love them. But like you said, nobody respects that anymore. People don't respect pastors anymore. I know. They just treat you however. But like I said, if you're in the world and you're doing all this, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Anybody else? Something you learned tonight? Miss Heather. Uh, Jesus wants to sing you uh, next time. And your spouse wants to sing you. Amen. True fact. Yes, ma'am. Rebecca, Sister Rick. Uh, you have to be the authority <coughs> of someone. And if you don't need your mentor's counsel, then you're not taking what they invested in you. <coughs> Amen. Because even when you have someone, <coughs> how many realize the norm today is it's just, it's, it's that's their opinion. It doesn't matter how much word they give you. It doesn't matter what how spirit-filled they are. It doesn't matter how prophetic they are. That's just their opinion. You know, and everybody's got one, so I'll just weigh it out. <laughs> but let's be, can we be honest and say that's the, that's the mindset of today. So to come out of that mindset, that's going to take some work and letting the Word of God apply to us, isn't it? Amen. <coughs> so that we can hear God and follow His Word. We can live the best life now. I mean, this whole book has been talking about, have you guys seen how the fabulous things you get when you follow the wisdom of God? How many are ready to live that life completely? Amen. A lot of us already are almost all, most of us in here are already on that path. I'm just ready to go farther down it. Amen. But it's it's realizing things like this, and and you know the, the crazy thing is to me, and I don't mean that most people read, have read have re, would have read this and they'd have went right past it. They'd have heard about drinking water out for sister. Hmm, that's nice. I wonder what kind of water they had back then. <laughs> You know, people just twist. A anybody else tonight? I told you so. That's uh, I just thought it was uh, neat that where it said um, about the sister. Where for singles, uh, how Christ will be your sister, and um, how even young people reach out to other young people, or however, just giving them hope, you know, that God is your sister. He will. He will your desire, he is the one that you can draw close to and give God that hope. Amen. And, I, and listen, I can vouch for it. I'm not preaching or teaching theory tonight on none of this. I've lived it. I've felt it. I've sustained it. It is truth. Yeah. You know, you're married right now one way or the other. Either you're married to Jesus or you're married to your earthly spouse, but you're married. And But he says, you know, it's... Whenever you get or married to both, exactly. But he's, when he says, you know, it's better to be stay single because when you're married, you also have to take care of your earthly family. Mm -hmm. Like my family has needs. My wife has needs. And I'm not meaning... <laughs> <laughs> they, there's things I have to take care of. When I was single, I could minister 24-7. I just went all... Every day, every moment of my life was consumed with winning souls. If I didn't win a soul, I want my my goal is to win a soul every day, and I pretty much did that. I can't do that now with the family. It wouldn't be fair to my family. It's not what God's required by me. God's required me to be a good steward of my family. I still put him, I still serve him, I still do all those things. But now I'm married to him. Me and Pastor Timmy together are married to him, married to Jesus together, and he expects us to steward our family. But when you're married to him alone, he's your spouse and he's got certain things he's expecting of us. And he, But he will sustain you. He will meet every one of your needs, not just part of them. I grew up in the country. We had a sister and it wasn't closed. So anything could fall in there, including my cat. And when I'm saying it's, it's a true story, my cat did fall in there. I had to get him out with a bucket. Yeah. But other things like other animals and dirt and junk can get in there and pop it. That's why your sister needs to stay closed. Yeah. She needs to not let anything get in it to pollute it. Well, that's exactly right. It's true. Down home, you got to keep them closed up. We, we would seal them after we would get done with them. 
homemade concrete slab. Before that, it was a pile of rocks. But, and then uh, they would dig their, most time down home though, we had, it was in solid rock, so it was much pure water, and you, hopefully you'd hit some water and it would come through all the time. So, anybody else tonight? We're doing good, we're almost out of here on time. Anybody else get something? Miss Rachel, I haven't picked on you yet. She's like, I thought he was gonna close. <laughs> Sister Deb. You've pretty well expounded on what I was thinking, but as, as a single person, you know, drawing from your own, um, well, being married to Christ, you're drawing to the Word, you're drawing to prayer, you're drawing to the intimacy with Him. And as long as you stay close to Him, you can do with Him, then it, it protects you from those temptations. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Good stuff. Amen. Good Bible study, amen. amen. I'm very glad you came. Amen. Broken Chains Church, where God is alive and well amen. and moving by His Spirit. Yes. And I'm excited about what He's going to do Sunday. You say, what is that? I have no idea. But I'm excited about it. Amen. It's going to be good. He's going to meet us here, amen. amen. So uh, come with your expector connected to your believer and find out where in the world all of our people are and go and hog tie them for Sunday morning. Huh? I know how to do that. Oh, just let them loose before you get them into church. It looks bad on camera. Yeah, it does. It looks really bad on camera. Did you see them? They had all those people tied up. We'd make the world news. Look bad in the church. Too. Look bad in the church. Too. Heather said, I got a full church fan today. Look at this. Yeah. We can get out our spiritual poles and reel them in. Yeah. yeah. Church, there was a church fan going around kidnapping people all over Springfield today. <laughs> Pastor said to get them here one way or another. I was just obeying. He said, that did not line up with the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm so glad you came tonight. I pray you got something out of this. We got through what? Two or three verses? Three. Three, three verses, yeah. So that's pretty good. And uh, I do this so ever so often with it and bring these other scriptures in because the truth is the Word of God is connected all over. And that's how it should be. But when it's God, it flows together. It's not just somebody's great idea. Because, you know, people can twist scriptures and will twist scriptures, but how I many know you can't twist the whole book? Amen. And, if there's, and if somebody's ever talking to you, it's okay to ask for more than one. Of course, a lot of times I'll just be honest anymore. If somebody's wanting to argue, they pick the wrong guy. I can play dumb like nobody's business. And then they just finally quit and go on. <laughs> but why do why, why you say that, Pastor? Because arguing's never saved anybody. But love has. Doesn't the scripture say not to argue with fools? Yeah, not to argue with fools or have no vain, or have no vain uh, arguments or, to, or a vain... It's, yeah, it's some King James word. I can't remember right now. But, but uh, yeah... He tells us not to do any of those things. But you know what I have found is that people remember if you took enough time to sit with them just for a little bit and love on them. Because they get tired of all that nonsense the same way anybody does. Amen. All right. Pastor Tammy, will you come close us out in prayer tonight?